Welcome to today's lesson. You're in for a treat. I've invited my good friend Ed Spargo to come. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Ed's a great jazz player. You're going to hear this. He studied and performed jazz for, oh, what, how many years, you figure? 35. Exactly. Something. He's a professional. This, might, this lesson could be a little advanced for some of you. That's all right. You're going to enjoy it. We're going to play three tunes, and we'll start by playing Autumn Leaves. And I'm simply going to ask Ed to just play the way he'd normally play, then we'll talk it. Ed has studied to master his fingerboard. He studied a lot of jazz thar harmony, a lot of jazz theory. And I'm always asking Ed, quit thinking about all that stuff so much and just relax and play. He's got a great ear, and you're going to hear that too. Let's just start out with a melody, okay? Yep. Autumn Leaves, a one, two, a three, a four, a one. That's it. Let's just stop right there. I love the solo. Let's just talk about what you're doing, okay? Okay. Ed, let me make a couple of comments and then ask questions. I really liked how uh, sensitive you were to sort of what I was doing. You kind of were using dynamics and you were leaving a little bit of space. That's a real important thing that I always teach in improvisation is all about listening for some space. Do you think of that consciously these days or what do you do? When you... Yeah, I just say, make sure I'm listening to you, what you're playing, and so we're, we're having a conversation. It's not like me doing all the talking so, <laughs> to, so you you can get a word in edgewise <laughs> good yeah. tell me now melodically what are you thinking about what were you trying to do what was your goal there when in this in this solo that you were playing well i was trying to you know play melodies and not you know just blow up edgios you know and i uh, i was thinking about uh recently i had transcribed a chet baker solo mm -hmm. that you had suggested i work on and uh one of the things i noticed about it was he sort of begins his next phrase on the same note that he mm -hmm. ended his that, last phrase on. That's great. I love that one. So I'm thinking about notes that sort of sound good on, as the changes move through them, you know. Let's let's illustrate that nice and slow. Sure. Pick one of your sort of, I'm going to call them target notes, okay? Sure. Here's, so, the, here's the first chord. So let's do one. Next chord. Good. Next one. Nice. A <laughs> common anyway. tone. Do exactly the same thing again if you don't mind. First chord. Ah. Now that is just killer. It's amazing to me how uh, that device of having a nice little phrase that'll fit some of the same chords, yep. common tones, just sounds so good. If you don't know this song, this is a great one for you to learn because 
I don't want to call it easy, but the tonality is such that you can do that perhaps as much more than you can in a lot of songs. Yeah. yeah, good. What else were you thinking about or trying to do during your solo? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we do the same concept with a different note or a different phrase? Can sure. you connect? Let's yeah. do that. So here we go again. Here's your first chord. Yep. Good. Next chord. Ah, nice. Good, let's do that in time. Okay. A one, two, a three. A four. Nice. How about another one? Pick another little sort of target note you like. Sure. Um, uh... Hey, now, can I ask you something? Sure, yeah. yeah. I'm sort of watching yeah. you, and maybe even think, and that yeah. was, did you happen to choose one of your target notes as a guide tone, third or seventh, and the other one as a third or seventh? Yeah, this was the third, <laughs> and that was the seventh. Yeah, yeah that's, so... what, that's common material for people to, you know, sort of choose if you've got to think, oh, what do I do here? Man, look for those guide tones, the thirds and the sevenths. Now, we're not talking about playing them at the same time like chords. Those are the thirds and sevenths. But we're just talking about if you pick one. We tend to go back to it a lot. And let's analyze that just for fun. Play your A for me, a low A. Just play an A. No. Good. This is a G, so that's what? Seven. Good. Next chord? D. Ooh, it's, it's 11th, but it's sitting there. Next chord? Um, it's a G major. We're at the root. Next chord? C major. Ooh, listen. It's a fifth. Next chord? F minor 7. Ooh, F tension. Next chord? B7. Another tension? Sure. So, 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 so some of them are tension and some of them are resolutions. Right. Watch this. I'm going to do that little chromatic thing, okay? okay. I'm going to pick a note and go down or up only by half step. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's do it again. I'll start here. Sure, sort of conceptually the same. Yeah. I do that a lot. Yeah. I, I, I find a note and I kind of go, ooh, how can I stay close to that? Yeah. You told me that once too, which was really cool. You said when you... Uh, Transcribe that Chet Baker thing. Yeah. How, how, tell me, how did you say you just, you just, what did you say you saw on it? He sort of begins his next phrase on the same note or very, or yeah. note half step away right. from the, yeah. the end. Or, or he stays yeah. as close as he can. Right. As opposed to. Yeah. Yeah, like when I first started to improvise, I would like put my first finger on the root. <laughs> play and, something, then, and then here's the next one. Put my first finger on the root. <laughs> play something. Yeah. You know. It's real easy for us when we're playing jazz to really sort of worry about the chords too much. You have to know the chords. Don't get me wrong. You have to know the chords. You have to be able to say, you know, we have to know the sound. You have to be able to hear them going by. But if we're not careful, we're going, here's this chord, here's that chord, here's this chord, here. As opposed to playing a melodic line that perhaps you'd call goes through the chords, huh? Right. Do another one. Okay, so oh. I'm going to start on the E. Ooh, good. Of the A chord. Good. And then we'll see, and I'll try to stay as close to that as good. I can. A one, two, three, four. Nice. Oh, that's killer, Ed. That's absolutely killer. Yeah. Let's do a... Um those two A sections of this song now yep. and move around between the a little bit. I mean, you don't have to jump, you know what I'm saying? Usually do that same concept in a couple different spots. Sure. So remember, we're, we're sort of staying close to the same note to start our next phrase with, or maybe we have to move it a half step either way. Either way. Yep. The point is, is we're sort of wanting to play a phrase and start from there, not start from a different spot. It just simply smooths out your solo. Yep. A one, two, a three.
this would be the bridge we're going to stop it. That's cool. Yeah. What else can you say about you know your well, concept? So, sometimes your I try to do a little more typic development. Ah. So I might play the phrase. <laughs> Question answer. Yeah. Hey, did you hear what he said? Motivic development? That's a great word. Yeah. Oh, and that was a nice one. And you do develop it. You say, well, how do I start that? Question answer. That's the simplest one. You make a statement and then you answer it. Then you make that statement. Then you make an ultimate answer. Yeah. Do those. This one you did. That was cool. Those ones you just did. Sure. Two, three, four. <laughs> Outstanding! Now, guess what? You notice what he's done? He's created a shape to his solo like this, as opposed to just up and down now. Uh, my good friend Michael Mannering calls that wiggling your fingers. So right. there's a lot more to playing good jazz than just wiggling your fingers. Sure, we make some phrasing. Oh, I love that, Ed. I love that. You played a bass line. I want to try it. Okay. A one, two, a three. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anything else you want to add to this little chunk we've done here? Well, you know, it, like you, like we talk about a lot. I have certain jazz patterns that my fingers fall under. Like I, I like doing. Sure, it's one of your little phrases you like. Yeah, and that's like out of a Grant Green solo we worked on. He does that in so many different places. It, it's amazing that you don't notice it mm -hmm. yeah until still you do sounds, the solo still sounds good and you see how many how many different times and how many different places he sort of so you work on it you'd be able to play it in all keys over all the chords right so i sort of that that pattern sort of became part of my language show know? us that pattern just for so like on the a minor chord i was doing it like on the so that's like good like three like yeah two three sure. root yeah, yeah and then here it was like that six seven one six seven course now there's the numbers guy in it oh yeah, yeah. And then when the i g just i just hear the phrase i don't hear the numbers right, and then when the g major comes up sure you keep it and then good, c good. C major. real slow now play that pattern real slow so they can see it perfect yeah. it just fits nicely on the bass you know and like oh, you can do it excellent. you can do it like let's you can do it in a on a minor chord or sure. a major chord. You know, sure, of course. Places. Relative, you betcha. Yeah. Um, let's play a little bit. Uh, let's pretend we're riding the solo a little faster. Just a different sound. Okay. One, a two, a one, a two. I think we did enough. Woo! You need, they they got to buy the album to hear the real stuff. <laughs> yeah. Ed, that's killer. Let's stop there and go to another tune. Thanks a million. Sure. Thanks for having me. This is yeah. cool, huh? This is cool. This is cool. I appreciate it.